Another good week. Uh, we got now, I don't know how many, a whole, bu- whole bunch of bills referred. Um, referred another batch of uh, a large batch today. So you'll see, you know, uh, as we've seen in years past, you'll see a lot of committee action over the next couple of weeks, short week next week, but um, a lot of committee action. You know, I would expect some beginning of some floor action maybe in the next uh, week, couple of weeks after. Um, you know, we, we had some. Um, I wouldn't call them fireworks. We had a good discussion yesterday, um, and I really do think the discussion yesterday was was productive and um, you know kind of what uh, I would describe as senatorial. So um, you know uh, that is what it is, uh, and I'm always going to try to stick up for the Senate as much as I can. I like the House, but it's different and it's supposed to be different. So um, we're going to try and keep it different. So a um, lot of lot of you know big subject matters referred already. Um, IP reform, education reform. We had that hearing yesterday. Um, I would expect those bills to be voted out next week. Um, foreign ownership, bunch of tax stuff. Uh, you know, a lot, lot of, lot of subjects in the, those first bills referred. So we'll hit the ground running here pretty quick, hopefully. Questions? Uh, one of the bills in the committee next week, I believe. Uh, well, if Nick Troy wants to do the state, state Louis police yeah. over again. Where is that in your? the caucuses yeah I mean I think it's it's a priority of a lot of folks um, probably not from what I know I haven't talked to everybody probably not universal support uh, amongst our caucus but certainly a lot of folks interested in doing something I you know I said it in an interview last week the uh, at some point you know st. Louis police have to there, there has to be some scenario in which they feel valued which they feel respected where they're getting the adequate um, um, pay is one thing, but obviously just, you know, respect from uh, the administration uh, at the city level is really, really important. There have been some good trends, I think, that have been um, have, have been noteworthy, but they're still not, they, just don't, they don't feel valued, you know, and so we've got to figure out a way to do that, um, whether it's, you know, state control or something else. There's got to be, there's got to be some movement there because St. Louis is, is shrinking uh and and you know i don't think anybody would say that it's for any other reason than you know folks don't feel safe when they get out of their house so st louis needs to be vibrant for missouri to be vibrant um i believe that uh and so you know this is a it's a st louis discussion but this is a statewide discussion because st louis economy is very very important to our state on uh this week in missouri politics on sunday you mentioned a need for republicans to push back against a growing authoritarian streak among some republicans could you expand on that and is that an issue you're facing with the freedom caucus in the Senate? well i don't know that's prescribed to anybody in particular I mean, i think we i i have seen um you know so-called conservative limited government people trying to use the force of government to force people to do uh the things that they want them to do um I, I, from my perspective, that's that's not being conservative. That's just using the, the, the government for a different purpose, right? We we generally um, push back against, and it is a distinguishing element between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in a lot of ways. Um, uh, the, the the size and scope of government being as small as it can possibly be to facilitate private um, sector growth and market market forces as much as possible. You know, so I, I don't. Um, all of our discussions here are um, in some form or fashion about the size and scope and role of government. I just don't want to use the government to bludgeon people into submission. What is an example of that? What is the example of using government to do that? I don't know. I, I, I just think it's a, I don't know that it's a, it's a tendency that I've seen, you know, um, I, I don't know that I'll probably come up with an example, but it, there, there, there's just been, I think it's a, you hear it, uh, I think, used in how some Republicans talk, um, um, and and it just it feels like a, it feels like it's kind of bubbling a little bit. I, I wouldn't say it's a, you know, it's a, a widespread problem yet. I don't know that we're doing a lot of it here, um, but um, I, it, it, there, there is a concern there for me. Uh, so hopefully we can, you know, get back to the roots of just being good small government. Well, what are they using government to force people? Well, I mean, I think you, again, I think you, you have this this tendency to, um, you know, just want to, um, 
there, there are certain things that, that markets can decide. There are certain things that the private sector can decide. Um, and, you know, for us, uh, that, that's all, again, that's been a distinguishing element for us to, to let, leave the government out of that as much as possible. So, uh, again, I, I think it's a, it's just a, it's an alarming thing for me, just a trend at this point. Um, and a lot of it is just in how people talk, how they, how they, you know, say certain things or describe certain things. But, um, you know, I, it's, it, hopefully we'll get better at it. A couple of state senators have uh, posted on social media a desire to see the um, convicts of the Gen January 6th attack released, freed. Uh, is that the position uh, of the Republican Caucus? What is your reaction to that as a I, We haven't talked that much about it. We haven't talked at all about it, frankly. Um, you know, I think we're focused on uh, Missouri-specific issues. Um, you know, the, the, the court system will decide what it's going to decide. The Republican presidential uh, caucuses are coming up in yeah. Missouri. Have you had much involvement in logistics on that? How, do you, how are you anticipating it's going to go? Uh, not, we, we've had some conversations more about, you know, logistics. Obviously, it's, it's, caucuses are, are, can be challenging and hectic. You know, it's more specifically kind of laid at the feet of the parties. But, um, you know, I was a part of a caucus in, I think, 12 when I was first running, and it was pretty hectic. It was the... It was when uh, the, the Ron Paul factions were trying to take control for the Mitt Romney factions, and that was interesting to watch as my first foray really into politics. So it'll be hectic, I assume, but we'll, you'll get it done. Logistically, like, how have things been going? I think it's okay. I mean, I, I've only had one. We actually have a meeting with some of the state party folks next week. It was supposed to be this week. It got delayed. Um, so I, I, I assume we'll learn more then, but haven't heard any, um, you know, hair on fire type things yet, so... Hopefully, okay. Are you supporting anyone? Are you supporting anyone in the caucus yet? No, um, not yet. You introduced a bill this week, thirteen twelve. Um, it looks like it's amending the terroristic threat. Oh, the swatting stuff, yeah. So that's related to swatting. Mm -hmm. And then you added this term "private residence" into the bill, mm -hmm. but the term before that is "inhabitable structure." I'm just wondering why. Yeah, it was something that the that our research thought was, um, you know, we call it belt and suspenders down here. Um, uh, but yeah, it was. I think it, I think it was designed to make sure that we're we're you know aiming in the right place. Um, and you know, I, 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 I haven't spoken to Secretary Ashcroft since uh, his his in incident. We had you know not a swatting issue, but I've had issues of you know folks coming to my house during elections. It, it it's. Not fun, and I don't care if you're, you know, far right or far left or somewhere in between. That's not how we should be doing things. So, you know, it, it, hopefully we can get something done. I, I spoke with Lane Roberts, representative, I, who I, I learned after filing this has filed this something similar a number of years in the House. Um, haven't got out of the House for whatever reason. So we're going to try to work together and, you know, just uh, beef, beef that up a little bit. Was the Ashcroft incident the thing that? Prompted you to actually file the bill? Uh, we had been talking about, um, there have been other instances, uh, you know, not in Missouri, but there have been other, you know, political and non political. You hear stories, you know, every once in a while of, you know, kids online playing Fortnite and, and, and basically just trying to screw with their friends. And so there, there's, there's malicious stuff and then there's people just being stupid. It's all bad, right? Uh, you know, and the person who's getting their door knocked down in some instances doesn't, doesn't really care if it's meant to be malicious or not. So I think that was the thing that kind of put us over the top of saying, hey, let's, you know, like, let, let's do something about this in Missouri, make it a priority. But it's, it's been an issue. You, you've seen it, you know, covering the media in a number of states around the country, political and non-political. Ashcroft was what put it over the top? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to see the Low Scholars program expand? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you want that to be, you want all of those restrictions to be lifted? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's a, I've always, I've always wanted, you know, as much of those choice options in as much areas of, uh, as many areas of the state as possible. Um, you know, the, the, it, it, I think it's working. It, it's a, it obviously new. And so I think the metrics and the data to, to really allow us to hone in on the, the success uh, of it's going to take some time. But yeah, it, it should be expanded. And I, there, there's no reason why a kid in Columbia should have access to something that a kid in Texas County doesn't, right? I mean, I think that's the, the entire point of providing more choices for, for kids and parents is not to say, well, 
the kid in St. Louis and Kansas City gets the choice, but the kid in rural Missouri doesn't, right? I don't think that's fair. Uh, and so, it, you know, and we've got, I think there's a, a income, it lifts the income restrictions a little bit, um, which I think is good. Everything costs more these days, you know, um, a, a family of four that, it used to be that a family of four that was making, you know, 70, 80, $90,000 was considered middle class. I'm not really sure that's the case anymore, right? So, um, so I think making sure that that is reflective of what, uh, you know, really it, what, what people are feeling and sensing in Missouri, I think is important. Why should tax revenue be used to pay for uh, tuition at private schools? I think, I think people should always uh, have choice in their education. That, that is a, a blanket universal statement for me. That doesn't mean that um, the, the state doesn't have some role in uh, making sure that there's accountability when there needs to be accountability, that those dollars are being used effectively to do the thing that we're trying to do. Um, but, you know, I think that, I, frankly, I think the days of, of us relying on kind of the old guard um, talking point that uh, traditional public is the only way to go and it's the only thing that government's ever going to support or value or, or put in front of parents, I, I think anybody who's touting that uh, line is woefully behind the times. And if they talk to uh, more than about 12 parents in any community in this state, I think that's what they're going to get. So I'm on the right side of history on this one. Uh, I have no no qualms, no beefs to, to, to believe that. And I think 10, 20 years from now, uh, when I, I believe there will be more choice in education, you know, universally around the country, um, you know, I think my, my position will be bared out. Why not wait one more year till we have the data from the program? Because it's not, and part of it is just about recognizing it, it's a, the, the, the broad statement is parents and kids need more choices, right? So this is one thing that we can do now um, to, uh, and I don't think it's a drastic step, right? It's not extreme. It's not, um, it's not uh, a tax credit for uh, every parent in the state to go do whatever they want, where, you know, in any way that they want, right? You could, we could go a lot further. We could push the pendulum a lot further, a lot faster if we wanted to, which I would love to do. Um, this is just saying, you know, with, there, there's a cap on it. You can only go to certain things. This is meant to be a help uh, and a blessing to, to, to kids and parents that need it. Um, and, you know, frankly, as, as poor of outcomes as we are seeing, um, warrants us to move faster, right? The, everything that we're seeing out of DESE, the numbers that are coming out of DESE, uh, as far as, um, you know, outcomes in, in Missouri schools are just not good. I want them to be good. I'm pro-public education. I'm as pro-public education as anybody in, it, it, that, that is a part of this conversation. Uh, I just think there needs to be more choice. What is your opinion on state appropriation? Well, I'd be in favor of it. Um, it'd be hard to do, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think you know there there will I think there will be various iterations of um, kind of to the to the previous point. This is going to be slow movement because it's such a um, you know kind of a divisive issue on this floor. Um, but you know, I, I would do I would vote for anything and everything that allows for you know every kid parent to have a choice. But it's going to be slow movement, and we recognized, you know, in 18 or 19 when we passed the original ESA bill, it wasn't exactly what we wanted. We wanted to do more and, and, you know, put more behind it, but it was what we could get done. So hopefully we can have another conversation this year and just take another incremental step before I leave. Uh, is the FRA coming up anytime soon? Uh, I assume we'll have a hearing. It's, it was referred. Uh, I did not talk to Senator Huff. I probably have a hearing next week. Um, and be voted out the week after, I would guess. Just hope to get that done earlier in the session? Or? Just, we just want to get it done. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know. Do you expect uh, an attempted hijacking uh, again? Or? I mean, I, what I've come to expect and what is real, you know, I, I don't expect much anymore these days. But, um, yeah, I, I'm sure there will be discussions. You know, um, we... You, you can't you can't jeopardize four and a half billion dollars, um, and the you know, the, uh, the the moral of the story we saw it two years ago it gets done one way or the other. So um, we'll we'll do everything we can to talk to you know anybody who wants to be a part of the conversation, um, but we we won't not pass it. Sports betting, the um, teams and the uh, mobile operators are 
seem to be getting closer to uh, running out of ballot initiative and collecting signatures. Would that put pressure on you guys to do something, or would it? If they do it or if they don't do it. Either way. I mean, I, 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 think, I, I, think, I don't think anything's different this year, uh, one way or the other. I, I, I don't know that it makes a tremendous difference in this chamber. You know, both, both sides are, are pretty entrenched. They're, you haven't seen a ton of movement um, between folks who – you've got the, the, the camp that wants VLTs, you've got the camp that wants VLTs and sports betting, you have the camp that, you know, probably votes no on everything. I just haven't seen a lot of switching between those three camps. Clearly, there's more support just to do sports betting. We saw that on the floor last year. Um, but I just don't think there will be much movement. One more? Otherwise, I'm done. What about um, IT reform? When's that coming up? Uh, it'll get uh, – yeah, we'll probably refer the joint resolutions next week or at least start that process. Um, so – Sooner than later, I see. So why would you want to make it harder to change the law by ballot initiative if you can't get something like sports betting through? Isn't that when the public should start? Well, I mean, I think, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think IP reform uh, cuts both ways, right? Like, I mean, one, it depends on the issue. Um, I, I've, I've said for a long time, I thought, uh, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I've always thought that, that there, there are enough people uh, and in some instances, people who have, you know, money who, are, who, who would be interested in doing an education, you know, something education related on the ballot. Right. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to use the ballot to your point. Uh, you know, I think our side could use the ballot more effectively. Um, it, it doesn't change the fact that uh, that can be true. And then also to say yeah, our Constitution is messed up and has too much in it. And maybe we should make it harder to, to, to change the, the, the Constitution. You know, those two things, I think, actually kind of. For the moment, they coexist in Missouri. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of our folks who are really interested in it. There, there's, there's levels. Some people, it's their top priority. Some people, it's not. So, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get them to committee. I'm sure they'll get heard fairly quickly. I'm sure the House will send something over sooner than later. And you know, we'll obviously have that as a vehicle. So, um, we'll see. Do you think, do you think Universal Pre-K has a chance on this side of the building? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I, my, my initial gut instinct is probably not, um, but maybe focusing on, you know, doing some of the stuff in the, uh, not exactly the same thing, but some of the stuff in the childcare space. Um, you only get so many bites at that apple, right? As far as kind of the, um, you know, you know bipartisan, you know, things that are tougher in nature to pass. Right. So I think we just have to figure out what the priorities are. Um, but so never say never, but I'd be a little bit surprised. So, thank you.